Hey everyone, so today we are going to review some important ideas that you'll need to know moving forward this week about some of the books that we're reading. First off, we're going to just review about uh, different genres of reading that you do. And one thing I'll say is uh, we get stuck in like one genre or one type of book or two, but we don't branch out. I really am going to encourage you this year to branch out and try different genres. In fact, uh, moving forward, you're going to be required to try different genres just to see what you think of them. And I think you'll find, uh, be surprised that you might find one or two that you really enjoy that you didn't realize. Um, so when you think about genres, here are some quick examples of some. One, uh, a fable where there is narrating about a truth, an important truth. Um, usually animals are speaking and uh, they're the main ones in the story. Usually there's supernatural or, um, you know, fantasy-related things happening in the story. Aesop's Fables is an example of many uh, famous stories related to uh, telling a lesson. And so for this, an example might be there's one, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, the wolf dresses up, gets infiltrates the sheep, and then basically... Um, nobody is alarmed or worried, and that gets an easy meal for the wolf. And so the moral of the story would be that appearances can be deceiving. And so uh, that's a fable. Science fiction is usually based on some sort of thing related to science that potentially could happen. Usually it's futuristic because the thought is maybe science can someday produce more space travel or even... Uh, time travel or something like that where it's not truth, it's not based on truth, but there might be something related to uh, it's futuristic because the assumption is maybe science could sometime, someday do something like this, but um, usually anything in space is related to science fiction or moving into the future. Adventure stories are just that. They're stories that, you know, there's danger um, excitement, they build up the suspense and something happens where the characters go from one adventure to another. And then mysteries, obviously there's something that needs to be solved, a mystery, something puzzling. It could be a crime or um, something that needs to be found or solved. Those are mysteries. So just a quick review of the different genres, the types of books or readings that might come up because you might have to identify some of those in the next week or so. The other thing I want to review is the idea of theme. Remember, this is a huge idea this year in fifth grade, being able to determine the theme of a text. So theme's just the message or the moral that's found within a text. Um, and so it's a lesson at the end of the story that even in your own writing, we were trying to get you guys to, um, like in your narrating stories, your personal narrative, come up with some sort of lesson or something that you realize. So here is a quick brain pop related to theme that will help us understand uh, this idea. So please watch this with me. I'll take the R2 unit. Come on, Moby. How many different takes do you need? No, I don't want to switch roles. Dear Tim and Moby, How do I figure out the theme of a story? And why is finding the theme so important anyway? From Bob A. Thanks for the questions, Bob. A theme is a central message or idea woven into the action of a story. Themes give a story meaning by linking the fictional world with our own. They comment on issues from our everyday lives and from the wider culture. They're a huge part of what makes films and literature so fascinating. If you've ever read a fable, you already know a simple type of theme. Fables always include a moral, a lesson about life. Take the tortoise and the hare. The hare is always bragging about how fast he is, so the tortoise challenges him to a race. The hare is so confident, he stops to take a nap halfway through. Slowly, but surely, the tortoise passes the hare and wins. It might seem like the story is all about speed and running. The larger message is that patience and determination pay off. The race is used to communicate a lesson that can be applied to real life. 
Themes are usually more subtle in movies and novels. It's easy to be wowed by spaceships, aliens, and princesses, and those are essential parts of the Star Wars story. But to find the themes, we have to read between the lines. Well, not literally. We have to look for patterns or ideas that come up frequently. The repetition of a word or phrase is a good sign you're onto a theme. We call those recurring words or images motifs. The Force is one big motif in Star Wars. We learn more about its symbolic meaning each time it's mentioned. Well, like at the beginning, the Force seems to be just a magical power. But over the course of the series, we learn that it's much more than that. It's a universal energy that connects all living things, and a spiritual balance between light and darkness. Themes are often set up as pairs of opposing ideas, like with the Force. At its most basic level, it represents the struggle between good and evil, but it's also about nature versus technology, the tension between instinct and logic, or the choice between freedom and destiny. And they sound complicated, but those themes are all right there in the movie. We find them by analyzing the story elements. For example, we can examine lines of dialogue, what the characters say. Like when Darth Vader calls the Death Star a technological terror. Then he says the colossal weapon is nothing compared to the power of the Force. His comments set up technology and nature as opposing ideas. Plot, the action in a story, is another great place to hunt for themes. Okay, Moby Wan, I will use the Force. I will trust my intuition. We did it, R2. We destroyed the Death Star. Right, Luke is successful because he relies on the Force. His natural instincts are victorious over destructive technology. Uh, well, in a great story, all the elements work together to support the themes. Look at the settings in Star Wars, where the action takes place. The Death Star is massive and spotless. Like a lot of advanced technology, it feels sinister and cold. Compare that with the Rebels' ships. They look and feel lived in, like a home. Even the costumes support that contrast. Stormtroopers wear masks, and their uniforms are totally rigid. They look more like machines than people. Compare that to the Rebel outfits, what we good guys wear. Our clothing is loose, comfy, and made of organic materials. Well, appearance is a key part of characterization. That's all the ways a character is portrayed, how he looks, speaks, thinks, and acts. Remember when we first meet Moby-Wan? He lives a simple life, not surrounded by gizmos and gadgets. He's a respected Jedi Master, but unlike the bad guys, he's humble and has a sense of humor. Yeah, those themes really resonate in today's high-tech world. Anyway, let's get this place cleaned up. Dad's going to be home soon. What? You are my father? No! 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 All right, so as we think about this and uh, the different ideas related to theme, uh, that is going to be something where you're going to be asked to practice uh, finding the theme um, today. And so you will be given a, a set of questions, and several of them involve um, theme. And so when you answer that, you will just take the circle here, drag it over, and answer the question. So uh, a handful of those questions will be on theme, and that's how you'll submit that assignment is by answering it that way. So make sure you do that um, next. But if 
we look at uh, the day, we want you to complete that assignment called Literary Genres. That's the one where I just showed you where you're going to drag over your answer. That's on its learning. Uh, be on the lookout for a conference with me today, um, tomorrow, or Friday. Thursday, we won't have them. Uh, so figure out when you are scheduled. Set an alarm. Remember, your power goal really is related to figurative language. So I asked each of you last week to be looking in your own reading for an example of similes or as many as you can and any sort of figurative language. But it might be easy to focus on similes. And then get your reading in for today. And please fill out your reading step log. Meeting with you guys last week, some of you realized, oh, I need to step it up and actually add to my log more consistently or multiple times a day for each 15 minutes of reading. So make sure you do that. All right. You guys are awesome and you have a great day.